Modern Astronomy in the Urantia Book The Central Universe According to the Urantia Book, at the center of our universe lies a large area that is hidden from view. It contains a billion bodies distributed in seven circuits in orbit around the eternal Isle of Paradise. The current figure shows this area. The nature of this area is described in another video, God, Paradise, and the Central Universe, that can be found on YouTube. The Superuniverse Level The Superuniverse Level consists of seven huge superuniverses as shown in the current figure. Each superuniverse is subdivided into smaller administrative units as shown in the current slide. The authors call our superuniverse Orvantan, and our planet is called Urantia. The system our planet resides in is called Satania. The central universe and the seven superuniverses are the only places that are inhabited in the master universe. The master universe contains the central universe, the seven superuniverses, and the four outer space levels. When we move from the central universe out into the superuniverse level, we now have the advantage that our astronomers can and do actually observe what this level of the master universe looks like, and we can compare it with the descriptions in the Arantia book. When we do, we find what appear to be some problems. But before we discuss the problems, it's helpful to view the picture the authors give us of the master universe, excluding the central universe, and then consider what astronomers have seen as they observe, describe, and measure the universe. Many of the numbers used for distance in astronomy and in the Arantia book are in light years. Light travels at 186,000 miles per second. So a light year is about 6 trillion miles. The star nearest to us, after the Sun, is Proxima Centauri, which is about 4.2 light years distant. The authors tell us that the seven superuniverses follow an elliptical path around the central universe, as shown in the current slide and in the following two slides. These illustrations are typical of the way that artists have depicted the seven superuniverses from the early days of the Urantian community. These pictures are in harmony with some information in the Urantia book. Orvantan is usually pictured as a galaxy, no doubt our own Milky Way galaxy. However, there is other information in the Urantia book that points to much larger superuniverses. I'll discuss that after we first look at the universe observed by our astronomers. The four outer space levels. According to the authors of the Urantia book, out beyond the superuniverse level there are four outer space levels which are usually portrayed as four concentric tubes. Urantian artists usually show all four levels as containing galaxies, just as shown in the current slide, but my understanding from the Urantia book is that only the first outer space level has galaxies. The second outer space level has only energy manifestations starting, but no materialization. I conclude that the third and fourth levels would then also contain no galaxies. Another feature that artists don't show because they can't is that each level is much larger than the previous one. The authors make it clear that both the superuniverse and the first outer space levels are very incomplete. The authors say that there are currently no material beings such as us in the first outer space level. They speculate that the material beings that will dwell there will eventually exist at the transcendental level, and as we are contributing to the emergence of God the Supreme, those beings will be contributing to the emergence of God the Ultimate. And someone, after we ascend to a much higher spiritual level, at which time we will be known as finaliters, will be working in some capacity in the outer space levels after the emergence of God the Supreme. Our Astronomer's View of the Universe the Milky Way Galaxy Astronomers have determined that our Milky Way Galaxy is a barred spiral galaxy with two major arms and several minor ones. The current slide shows a barred spiral galaxy with two major arms. The next slide shows an artist's concept of what our galaxy would look like from above. The arrow points to the position of our Sun. The next slide shows our location in one of the arms of our galaxy. The white arrow points to our Sun. The following slide shows what a side view of our galaxy would look like from Earth if we could see all of it at once. All the major constellations are shown. 
Note that the spout of the Sagittarius teapot constellation points to the center of the Milky Way galaxy. The center of the galaxy is considered to be in the constellation Sagittarius. According to astronomers, our galaxy is about 100,000 light years in diameter, and we are about 25,000 light years from the center. In the middle of the bulge in the center is a gigantic black hole with a mass 4 million times greater than that of our sun. Astronomers have calculated that our galaxy has at least 200 billion stars, with some estimates as high as 400 billion stars. Our Milky Way galaxy has a number of small satellite galaxies, as shown in the current slide. These include the large and small Magellanic Clouds. Supernova SN1987A took place in the Large Magellanic Cloud. The local group, M31, the Andromeda Galaxy, is the closest large spiral galaxy to our Milky Way galaxy. The current slide shows a picture of M31. Astronomers call the collection of M31, our galaxy, and the satellite galaxies of each the local group, which is shown in the current slide. M31 is estimated to have about a trillion stars and is as much as 220,000 light years in diameter. Astronomers calculate that M31 is about 2.4 million light years from us. M31 is one of the few galaxies that has an apparent motion toward our galaxy, and astronomers propose that the two galaxies will merge in 5 billion years. No, it won't make a bang. The collision will take place over many millions of years. Galactic Clusters The next step up from local groups such as ours is the cluster. One of the closest large clusters is the Virgo Cluster. This cluster is the largest grouping within the Virgo Supercluster. Astronomers say that this cluster has 150 large galaxies and about a thousand dwarf galaxies. The Supercluster Astronomers tell us that our local group is a part of the Virgo Supercluster. An illustration showing the placement of groups and clusters within this supercluster is shown in the current slide. It is also known as the local supercluster. Astronomers can tell that our local group is part of this supercluster because we have some motion in common with the rest of the supercluster. The Virgo supercluster is about 110 million light years across. It is an elongated, flattened disk rather than a sphere. It has a halo that contains about a third of the total galaxies. The supercluster contains 2,500 large galaxies and about 50,000 dwarf galaxies. The next slide shows a number of superclusters centered on the Virgo supercluster. The following slide shows a map of the distribution of clusters and superclusters up to about a billion light years from the Two Mass Astronomy Survey. Supercluster Strings and Walls as astronomers have plotted the structure of the universe, they have discovered that the superclusters are arranged in strings and walls, surrounding huge voids. They just recently discovered the largest void ever found. It is a billion light years in diameter. The current slide shows a mathematical model of how galaxies are distributed in strings. Astronomers feel that dark matter is first formed in strings and then galaxies accumulated along these strings of dark matter. As they map the universe, they have not found any structures larger than the walls formed by these strings of galaxies. The Visible Universe According to astronomers, the visible universe is about 13 billion years old. So the light from the most distant galaxies traveled about 13 billion years to reach us, which means that they were 13 billion light years from us. The actual size of the universe is much larger since it has been expanding ever since that light left the first galaxies about 13 billion years ago. The current slide shows the universe as far as the astronomers have mapped it, about 6 billion light years. The map pictures a seemingly random assortment of superclusters and voids. Reliability of astronomy's measurements Some folks may question how reliable the astronomer's distance measurements are. The astronomer uses a set of techniques to measure distance known as standard candles that form a ladder of capabilities from measuring very close by objects to measurements out to the edge of the observable universe. 
The current slide shows the various standard candles used to measure ever greater distances. The first standard candle is known as parallax. If you hold your finger out in front of you and observe it with first one eye and then the other, you will notice that the finger seems to move. This is parallax, caused by the distance between your two eyes. The information on the slide is a bit outdated since the Hipparchos satellite has allowed astronomers to measure parallax for stars up to 600 light years distant. And from that information to accurately determine the distance to these stars. The next standard candle consists in use of the characteristics of a class of variable stars, the Cepheid variables, to determine distance. This is of special interest to Urantia book readers because in paper 41, the authors commend these variable stars as accurate standard candles for distance measurements. Use of the Cepheid variable stars allows distance measurements of up to 60 million light years. Fortunately, there are a few Cepheid variable stars close enough that their distances can be checked with the parallax method using Hipparchos satellite data. This assures that we have accurate measurements out to at least 60 million light years, which allows us to measure the distance to a number of close by galaxies and check the accuracy of other standard candles used for larger distances from us. From the Urantia book, The Limitations of Revelation. Before I compare the universe views of the Urantia book with those of current astronomy, it might be well to review a short section of paper 101 that tells us what we should expect of the science and cosmology content of the Urantia book. Consider this sentence. Any cosmology presented as a part of revealed religion is destined to be outgrown in a very short time. Accordingly, Future students of such a revelation are tempted to discard any element of genuine religious truth it may contain because they discover errors on the face of the associated cosmologies therein presented." Unquote. This tells me that the authors knew that there are errors in the science and astronomy, but they ask us, please don't reject the book because of these errors. Here's another telling sentence in this section. We full know that while the historic facts and religious truths of this series of revelatory presentations will stand on the records of the ages to come, within a few short years many of our statements regarding the physical sciences will stand in need of revision in consequence of additional scientific developments and new discoveries. These new developments we even now foresee but are forbidden to include such humanly undiscovered facts in the revelatory records." Unquote. This affirms that the authors knew what the errors were, but couldn't tell us because they weren't allowed to give knowledge beyond our current stage of scientific development. Our Astronomer's Universe versus that of the Urantia Book. As we examine the universe as mapped by astronomers, we can see major differences between the astronomer's pictures and those of the Urantia Book. The astronomer's observable universe, the distance from our galaxy to the furthermost galaxy we can observe, is more than 40 billion light years, considering expansion since the light left the first galaxies, versus the size indicated in the Urantia book, which appears to be much smaller if the first outer space level extends out perhaps only 50 million light years from our Milky Way galaxy. The Andromeda Galaxy Our astronomers tell us that the Andromeda Galaxy is about 2.4 million light years distant, whereas the Urantia book indicates the distance is 1 million light years. Because of the accuracy of the astronomer's standard candles at this distance, I have no problem accepting the astronomer's number as correct. It is worth noting that at the time the Urantia papers were received, astronomers thought that the million light year figure was correct. The current slide shows how astronomers' calculation of the distance to M31 has changed over time. Orvantan. How different is the universe as portrayed in the Urantia book from that mapped out by astronomers? Before we decide that, we need to consider some additional information given by the authors. The current slide reflects the information in the following quote from paper 32. The Satanian system of inhabited worlds is far removed from Reversa, and that great sun cluster which functions as the physical or astronomic center of the seventh superuniverse. From Jerusalem, the headquarters of Satania, it is over 200,000 light years to the physical center of the superuniverse of Orbantan far, far away in the dense diameter of the Milky Way. Satania is on the periphery of the local universe, and Nebadon is now well out towards the edge of Sorvantan.
from the outermost system of inhabited worlds to the center of the super universe is a trifle less than 250,000 light years, unquote. These distances are mapped on the current slide approximately to scale. The following quote from paper 15 also supports the concept pictured in the current slide. The vast Milky Way starry system represents the central nucleus of Orbanton, being largely beyond the borders of your local universe. This great aggregation of suns, dark islands of space, double stars, globular clusters, star clouds, spiral, and other nebulae, along with myriads of individual planets, forms a watch-like, elongated circular grouping of about one-seventh of the inhabited evolutionary universes." Unquote. So if the Milky Way is only the nucleus, or Vontan could be much larger than just the Milky Way galaxy, even larger than pictured in the current slide. Another quote from paper 15. The superuniverse of Borbanton is illuminated and warmed by more than 10 trillion blazing suns. Unquote. Astronomers calculate the number of stars in our galaxy at between 200 and 400 billion. If we use 300 billion as a basis, then our galaxy is 33 times too small to be our von time. In fact, the Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy, which has about a trillion stars, together are only a little larger than a major sector. And another quote from paper 15. Of the ten major divisions of Orvantan, eight have been roughly identified by Urantian astronomers. The other two are difficult of separate recognition because you are obliged to view these phenomena from the inside. If you could look upon the superuniverse of Orvantan from a position far distant in space, you would immediately recognize the ten major sectors of the seventh galaxy. Unquote. This statement is odd. No map of our galaxy I've ever seen shows eight definite divisions that look like major sectors within the Milky Way galaxy. However, it is easy to find eight galaxies in our cosmic neighborhood. And by calling Orbantan the seventh galaxy, it seems to me that the authors are once again trying to reinforce the impression that Orbantan is the Milky Way galaxy. Here's yet another relevant quote from paper 15. The rotational center of your minor sector is situated far away in the enormous and dense star cloud of Sagittarius, around which your local universe and its associated creations all move. And from opposite sides of the vast Sagittarius subgalactic system, you may observe two great streams of star clouds emerging in stupendous stellar coils." Unquote. Looking toward the astronomical constellation Sagittarius is looking toward the center of our galaxy, as shown in the current slide. The next slide is a photograph of the Milky Way galaxy looking towards the galactic center. The dark patches are clouds of dust and gas lying in front of parts of the galaxy. They block the light of the Milky Way stars behind them. The center bulge is an area of high stellar density. Astronomers now know that our galaxy has two major arms. Are the arms that the authors refer to actually the arms of our galaxy? This seems to suggest that our galaxy could be INSA, our minor sector. John Coslin suggested this in a presentation at the International Conference of 2005. His presentation on this subject can be seen at ubastro.com. The current slide is one that he used to show superclusters that might be the seven superuniverses. He contends that the Virgo supercluster is Orvantan. Here's a quote from paper 12 in the Urantia book that might also support John's theory. Most of the starry realms visually exposed to the search of your present-day telescopes are in Orvantan, unquote. The 100-inch Hooker telescope on Mount Wilson was in operation by 1917, 18 years before the Urantia papers were received. Astronomers could see thousands of galaxies through this telescope. Even an amateur astronomer using a modest-sized telescope can see hundreds of galaxies. Are many of these galaxies included in most of the starry realms? There is one problem with John's theory. The Virgo supercluster has about 750 trillion stars in its 2,500 large galaxies. It is 75 times too large to be Orvantan if the 10 trillion stars figure given by the authors is accurate. My conclusion is that the authors of the Urantia book have not given us a clear, unambiguous picture of what Orvantan is. What part of the visible universe is Orvantan? 
when I contemplate the different pieces of information, I visualize at least three alternatives. One, the Fontan is the Milky Way galaxy. This idea is generally supported by the authors. Two, Ravantan is a number of galaxies, perhaps 20 or 30 of them. The Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy might constitute a major sector. The figure of 10 trillion suns in Ravantan, as well as our ability to see eight major sectors of Ravantan, support this idea. 3. The Milky Way galaxy is a minor sector and the Virgo supercluster, or part of it, might be Ravantan. This may be supported by the authors in two places in the text. As to why the authors chose to give us this mixed picture, I can only speculate. Perhaps they wanted to give the readers in the 1930s a picture commensurate with their level of astronomy knowledge at that time, but they also wanted to plant some clues about what our astronomers would discover as they explored the universe. I'll have some very serious questions to ask our unseen friends at the next level whenever I get there and if I'm not so overwhelmed that I forget the questions. Outer space levels. And what are the outer space levels? When we look at maps the astronomers have made of the universe, do we see structures that correspond to the description of the first outer space level? Here's what the authors of the Urantia book have to say in paper 12 about these levels. Far out in space and at an enormous distance from the seven inhabited super universes, there are assembling vast and unbelievably stupendous circuits of force and materializing energies. Between the energy circuits of the seven super universes and this gigantic outer belt of force activity, there is a space zone of comparative quiet, which varies in width but averages about 400,000 light years, but about one half million light years beyond the periphery of the present grand universe. We observe the beginnings of a zone of unbelievable energy action which increases in volume and intensity for over 25 million light years. These tremendous wheels of energizing forces are situated in the first outer space level, a continuous belt of cosmic activity encircling the whole of the known, organized, and inhabited creation. Still greater activities are taking place beyond these regions, for the Uversa physicists have detected early evidence of force manifestations more than 50 million light years beyond the outermost ranges of the phenomenon in the first outer space level. These activities undoubtedly presage the organization of the material creations of the second outer space level of the master universe. Unquote. The current slide shows the probable size of the first outer space level. As I mentioned before, the authors seem to say that there are materializations only in the first outer space level. Astronomers estimate that there are over 100 billion galaxies in the visible universe. It is hard to believe that all these galaxies are contained in a donut-shaped ring only 50 million light years thick. A second problem is that our astronomers say that the visible universe has a radius of about 13 billion light years, but now has an actual radius of about 40 billion light years due to expansion of the universe since the light left the first galaxies 13 billion years ago. There is a major disconnect between the 50 million light year size of the first outer space level and 40 billion light years. Unfortunately, the authors don't specify a size for the central universe, so we cannot quantify the actual size of the master universe portrayed by the Urantia book. But even if the central universe were a few billion light years across, I think the master universe would be much smaller than the universe our astronomers observe. Finally, I'd like to quote a short piece from an old friend, Dr. Meredith Sprunger, titled, Preparing for Scholarly Evaluation of the Urantia Book. Mature and intelligent students of the Urantia book ought also to give up any inerrancy doctrine. Hopefully, many have never held such a view. The Urantia book has errors or discrepancies in biblical references, in scientific statement, in historical references, and in logic. I have never been much interested in these historical, scientific, and logical aspects of the Urantia book because they are peripheral to the real purpose of the book, spiritual enlightenment. It is not primarily a book of history or science. It is a book of spiritual insight and guidance. I regard the Urantia book revelatory for the same reason I so regard the Bible. It contains the highest quality of insight into spiritual truth and reality of any book I know. It presents the most meaningful spiritual cosmology available on the planet. The best in Christian eschatology pales by comparison. 
It contains the most dynamic and spiritually uplifting picture of the life and teaching of Jesus available. It integrates science, philosophy, and religion more effectively than any other religious source. It is validated more completely by experience than any religious view with which I am acquainted. This is the important thing about the Urantia book. Just as the Bible has been subjected to objective scientific study, so the Urantia book must be critically analyzed if it is to become a reliable source of spiritual guidance for humanity. Errors or discrepancies of fact or logic should be pointed out and examined. Philosophical and spiritual truths should be studied and evaluated. We must understand, however, that such an objective study cannot prove or disprove spiritual realities. It cannot determine what is or is not revelatory. It can be an important tool in helping the individual and society make evaluations and judgments regarding such truths. It is generally assumed by religious scholars that spiritual reality does not contradict scientific fact or the authentic aspects of human experience. Unquote. And a final word from the philosopher Rodin of Alexandria, as recorded in paper 160. Only a brave person is willing honestly to admit and fearlessly to face what a sincere and logical mind discovers.